So welcome, uh, Level 1 Physicists, uh, NCA Mechanics, to Movement and Position. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the concept of speed, uh, an average speed. So average speed is the distance an object travels over a certain amount of time. And in physics, we use the measurement or the units of meters per second for speed. So as I said, speed is the change in distance of an object over change in time, where the change in distance uh, is the final distance minus the initial distance, the starting distance, and the change in time is the, the, the final time for that final distance minus the initial time. Okay, and in physics, for change in, we use the symbol delta, that triangle shape, so it means that speed, or V, equals delta D over delta T, where V is velocity, because in level one physics, essentially speed and velocity are essentially the same. We kind of use them interchangeably. That changes uh, later when we look at level two and three physics, but for the moment, velocity and speed are the same. The final distance is measured in meters. The initial distance uh, also in meters, and the delta T uh, is the change in time measured in seconds. So this is where equation triangles uh, come in quite handily. Okay, so what that says uh, from the triangle is that distance, if you rearrange the equation, equals speed times time, and time equals distance divided by speed. So you're going to have to learn these equations uh, by rote learning, okay, or maybe the first thing you do in an exam is write down this, the equation triangle for distance, speed, and time. So in terms of conversions, um, one kilometer per hour will be a thousand meters per hour, but remember an hour is 60 seconds times 60 minutes, because it's 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a, a minute. Therefore, one kilometer an hour will be a thousand divided by 3,600 seconds or 0.28 meters per second. Or conversely, one meters per second equals 3.6 kilometers an hour. Another important thing uh, that you have to know is the idea of distance time graphs and being able to plot them. So here's an example of a distance time graph here, where distance goes on the y-axis, okay, going up axis, and time goes on the x-axis at the bottom. And you'll notice that distance is in meters and time is in seconds. And being able to plot those graphs becomes important uh, later on because the gradient or slope um, of a distance time graph increases with speed. So the, the faster the object, the steeper the gradient is, and the slower the object, the um, shallower uh, the gradient is. Okay, So you have to be able to also uh, calculate the um, velocity or speed of an object from a distance time graph by taking the gradient, which is the change in distance, change in the y value, uh, divided by the change in the x value. Okay, there we go. So in the graph opposite, you've basically traveled um, 150 meters uh, in 10 seconds. So the gradient is going to be 150 uh, meters, the change in the y value or change in distance divided by the change in x to, uh, the x value, or 10 seconds. So 150 divided by 10 gives 15 meters per second, which is the speed of that object. It's traveling at a constant speed of 15 meters per second. So you have to be able to calculate that from a graph as part of the course.